Hey folks, really glad to bring out another Hunter Harvester episode and bring my focus right back onto good game meat, good game cooking. Had a really good hunt on some private property with my mate Andy the other day. Got some pigs and deer, it was a solid session. From that came a really beautiful piece of fallow deer shoulder which I want to cook up for you guys as well and got some trout fishing adventures to chuck in at the end there too. Folks, I've got to move house again unfortunately and um, Got a fair few of these hoodies around still that I'm keen to shift. They've been going for 69, I'm, I'm putting that down to 49. Really clear, keen to clear them out as, as fast as I can over the next couple of weeks. So if you've been keen for one and you're keen for a bit of a bargain, we just want some, some good warm green hoodies that last you out the rest of winter and early spring, aussiebushharvest.com, would appreciate it if you're keen. But moving right into it, here's some deer and pig action from the other weekend. Man, we had a cold start to that hunt. But they had a lot of game right out in the open, desperate for a bit of sunshine and desperate for some feed in country that had been, you know, frost hit a lot. Not much sweet grass going on. Anyway, it was a solid mission. Great to spend it with you, Andy, man. Looking forward to the next one. All the animals will want the first rays of that sun. All of them. To be honest, I'm pretty pleased that we've managed to push ahead without sleeping in. <laughs> like last night was a very, very cold night. But anyway, we're both up and into it. All of this rugged up attire will be off and abandoned within a couple of hours, I'd say. And I think we've missed our chance. Oh, don't rush it then. Good to get one on the deck. Shot it right into the freezer. That's good. Whilst it is so cold, what we're going to do is just dress it out. Um, and probably hang it in a tree in the shade because it'll say frosty down by the creek. On one of those limbs for, for hours. Have a little bit more of a poke about. Yeah, and see what the rest of the day brings. Beautiful though. She looks like she's in de decent nick. I mean, not completely covered in fat but oh, you guys would like that what a pleasure it is when someone else wants a bit of butchery experience and my hands are clean I don't mind this at all right now Andy's just using the bone saw to really split the back of the pelvis so because he's also done this to the brisket too that means it'll just be a very very clean gut all the way from the esophagus right down to the bung straight on through without having to pull anything through or put anything up like that. Clean as a whistle. There we go. Nice one. Yeah. If you want to put it down or anything, just see. Thanks, mate. Well, I'll just um, come on this side of the log. I'll just grab it down a bit more. Yeah. We can get right up against here. Yep. 
don't remember ordering ice water off you, mate, but I'll, uh, yep, I'll take, take a sip. Anyway. Hold up. Hold up. Bro! Is your gun unloaded? Yep. That's four. Black one there, patchy one. More on, there's more on. It was fucking intense. 360 degree pig hunt. Here's the thing, man, there's gonna be a few more in these bloody blackberry patches as it is. You're good? Yep. Mate, the feeling when they just came up there. The feeling when it fucking ran at us? Jesus Christ. I just feel like there's only one discrepancy which I'm pretty sure I just saw roll down into the bush there, but I want to just be sure. That's good, that was the one that charged us. It's amazing, I can't believe it had that much go in it. Oh, you poor thing. Bless you. Mate, that'll, um, we could take a bit of meat off that if you want. What a bomber, that was hectic. That was absolutely hectic. We've got a lot of young sows out of the mix just then. And that's great. Like, you know, it might be exciting to have a big pig shoot like that. Pigs are a huge drama. And we're gonna shoot as many of them as we can see on this place. It's the only right thing to do. What we'll also do is, I mean, these are, you know, that perfect size, good size that we'll take, take meat from. To be honest, just from first assessment, they look really plump and healthy, which is great. Um, Hitting the nose and oh, poor piggies, I don't know, they got, they're pretty wise animals, eh? I'll never forget that. It is what it is though, you're gonna get shot. Happy with a lot of clean kills today, that's great. That's really good. Well, for tonight's dinner, Hopefully lunch tomorrow. We've got this beautiful fallow deer shoulder here. And this was from the, the hunt I did on the weekend with, with Andy. It was a great time. And it's a beautiful cut of meat. I reckon the shoulder is so underrated. And I think largely it's got a lot to do with the fact that just a lot of the cuts on it don't lend themselves naturally to things like steaks or familiar cuts that people are used to working with. I think for a lot of hunters it ends up just becoming mince or going to slow cook. And, and I'm going to slow cook too, but 
not because it's some poor cut of meat, it's extremely tender meat. Um, I'm gonna make myself a venison ragu with it after slow cooking three pieces of this shoulder over about an hour and a half. And this is something that you might wanna do on a work night with slow cooker. I'm gonna use my, my pot for this on the stove top. But in order for this to fit, I'm gonna break this down into three portions. So you've got the shank here, which a lot of people use for osabuco and things like that. Um, the middle bit's called the humerus, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it is, yeah, funny bone. And, um, and the top part is the blade roast. First things first, I'm gonna take the blade roast off. And, uh, coming from this way. And you see I just came straight on down. You can see that I've exposed the joint there. And so now I can just follow the sinew through that. That's the easiest part to take off. Now I'm gonna split the, the humerus from the shank. This might just take a little bit more for me to find the joints because to be perfectly honest, I don't normally split them in three like this. Just two. I'm gonna find where that joint is. That's nice, three pieces there. Nice. Yep, she'll do. Bit of pepper, more than a bit actually. Now, enough stock to just get, you know, probably just an inch from the top of the of the pot. I will save adding salt till later on because there's a fair bit of salt in the stock already, and you know, just to adjust it to personal taste and all that. So I'll add stock. I'll add salt later on. It's gonna need a bit more than that. There we go, that's the level I'm happy with. And ready for the stove. So I'm gonna just start a little hotter to start with, but then bring it down to just a, a simmer level once there's a bit of heat going in the pot. I'll be back in an hour to check on it. Completely fall apart yet, but you can see it's 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 really giving. You can see it's already there's the there's the blade, it's all coming off. That would be the bit of the oyster cut. You know, I'm gonna give it a little longer. Um, at a nice low heat as well, keep it simmering. Nice. This is a little entree. Just crack those bones open to get a bit of the marrow out. Oh, it's just. Mm. It's just the best. There we are, blades out. Now to be honest guys, like just this by itself is absolutely fantastic table fare. It's just delicious, really nutritious. And that's everything off the bone. Oh, I bullshitted, I'll chew on that in a second. But um, you get what I'm saying. And look at all that, that beautiful fat coming to the surface there. Now I guess the big thing with deer fat is it's got a much higher melting point than like beef tallow wood or a pork fat wood. Um, and so when people like some they talk about a waxy flavor, often that's just because the fat's just gone down to a lower point in temperature and then starts to harden it and, and coat the mouth a bit like that. Um, so best to enjoy this kind of thing when it's delicious and hot. My plan from now is to let this reduce down nicely, um, add some crushed tomatoes and some other things and, and turn it into a nice ragu. So that'll be, that'll be stage two. Few olives. Look the way that ties it up. Look at this. 
beautiful. That's a lot of olives there. Folks, that's a hardy winter feed. Sourced naturally. Well, let's harvest nature anytime we possibly can. Folks, if there's any of you out there who have suggestions on how you guys might cook shoulder different ways or ways to improve in the way I've done it, please let us know in the comment section below. Let's get sharing and let's get a fuller utilization of the game animals that we're so lucky to have. Respect. That's an all right fish. Well done. Oh, another nice bow. Yeah. That's a colourful fish, man. Look at that. Oh, finally! Finally! Fish! Oh. Fairly decent rainbow. You made me nervous. You made me nervous. Did we work hard for him or what? Very pretty hen. Oh, sweet. Yes. fishing
got small trout over here plucking stuff off the surface. None of them are big. And we've got a creek flowing in here. So this whole area I've kind of earmarked for the good times. <laughs> but a glow bug on the fly rod will hopefully be Indicator there. Fish! Straight away. Oh! Oh! Yes! Oh, it's a good one! Oh, that's just what I wanted! Yes! Come home. It's a nice rainbow. Pan sized fish. Very good. Gooden, I mean legal, and I'm happy to take it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yes. Whoa, beautiful rainbow trout. Oh. oh man, it's good rainbow trout. I'm going to take it home, so I'm going to give it a quick wallop on the head. Hey folks, I'm really happy with that rainbow. That's something in it. It's low 40s. Healthy lake fish on the mouth of this beautiful creek that comes out the side into Talbingo Pondage. I only brought the GoPro out because this is a bit of a, a fresh experience for me. The first time I'm solo in my boat by myself in what is a fairly unique patch of water, Talbingo Reservoir, right in the guts of Kosciuszko. Big, broad, cold area. I got my feed. Very happy with that. So stoked. Folks, I just want to say a really big thanks to everyone who's taken the time to support this channel, subscribe to the very generous people who throw in support on Patreon, respect to you guys, and everyone who just takes the time to watch and interact with this. I appreciate all your comments. Aussie Bush Harvest means a hell of a lot to me, guys. It's my primary focus right now, and I just really want to be able to get good messaging out to new hunters, people coming into our community. You guys are all welcome, because we've got a good message to send out there, guys. Wild harvest is something to always be proud of. And our good times must always be natural. As always, guys, maximum respect.